there has been a sudden, hard over, complete reversal in a major poly, policy position of the Biden administration. A complete U-turn. And this is in regard to the border wall, the border wall between the United States and Mexico. As a matter of fact, this is so major that Homeland Security uh, Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, he came out Wednesday and said that the U.S. has a acute and immediate need to build a border wall. A border wall. Can you believe this? Especially after Joe Biden had said this. Listen to this. Wow. Not only did Biden say there would not be another foot of wall built or constructed in his administration, he actually sold part of it. And matter of fact, they've been passing all kinds of laws and regulations just to try to prevent anybody else in the future from building a border wall, especially if Trump were to ever return. But suddenly a complete reversal. Why? Well, just in a little backdrop, you got to know, we just had in the month of September, 200 and 60,000 illegal immigrants. Uh, I think the word immigrant is very generous term for people. You know, it's kind of a, a bastardization, excuse the word there, of a term because immigration is an honorable process by which we get new citizens into the United States or new people, candidates for citizenship. Uh, but a lot of people have been coming over illegally. Now, the United States is built on immigration. Immigration is a cornerstone of this nation. But we need to vet the people coming in. When you got 260,000 coming in in the month of September, that's like the number of people that, in, that the Russians sent in to invade Ukraine. Can you, can you believe that? This is an invasion. And what's coming across? It's the people that was turned loose from the prisons and, the, and according to Trump, the insane asylums and whatever else out of uh, Venezuela and all these countries south, uh, the people that they really didn't want, they've been herding them north. And of course, as you know, uh, there are YouTube channels that have documented that some of these um, immigrants appear to be members of the Chinese military. And some of them get in the United States and as soon as they cross the border, they're going to the nug ranges and going bang, bang, bang. How they get that stuff so fast? What are they up to? Uh, and it gets worse. It gets a lot worse. We're going to go into that a little bit more. But guys, just bear in mind, you know, our economy is at great risk over all this stuff. And even if they put up a border wall now, it's going to take them a while to construct it. And if they're serious about it, it's going to, uh, <clears throat> like I said, uh, take a while. The nature of this country may have been changed because a lot of uh, illegal drug cartels, uh, criminals, I'm about to go into it. There's been something like uh, 14,000 smugglers that come across the border. There has been something like that we know of, that we know of, 42 members of terrorist groups that were on no-fly list that somehow got in this country, and uh, they can't document what happened to them. So I'm going to go into that a little bit more. But guys, just given the, the stress to our country, the damage may have already been done, and maybe they're kind of giggling in the background, and maybe they've already changed the voter demographics of this country. One reason they apparently have enjoyed this so much. Uh, you could take it from James Carville. What did James Carville say many, many years ago? He said, there ain't no Democrat, excuse me, he said, there ain't no Republicans crossing that border. In all fairness, in time, a whole lot of the Hispanics, because they're very family-oriented, actually do turn quite conservative, they're very religious, very family-oriented, and they get over. Maybe at first, they uh, support the party that supported them getting in, but when they get the roots set here and families, they look around and go, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Bottom lot law and order. Unfortunately, there's a, who sends most of these people in? They're being sent in by the drug cartels. The drug cartels are who run these people in. And, and the drug cartels are coming in themselves, along with fentanyl, which has been taking out something on the order of 107,000 Americans last year. You know, that's uh, twice as many people is expired, almost twice the number of people expired in the 12 years of the Vietnam War. So, and also we've been getting what? Uh, we've been getting a tuber tuberculosis 
popping up in this country. Uh, just all kind of issues coming across the border. Because why? We're not vetting the people. But that's okay if you can change the demographics of the country. And you know, the globalists seem to like this kind of thing. Allegedly, uh, I've seen it written in the past where uh, they were all in favor of having people from other countries flood into Western nations to change the character of those nations so they wouldn't have the nationalist ideals that they have so they could weaken down national identities and meld everybody into one big global governance system. Hmm. That, that's what, you know, I've seen this written some in places in the past. Now, I haven't seen a lot of talk about it lately because, well, maybe the agenda has worked out so good already. So we've already got a lot of damage done at this point. And how do we recover? Well, we can recover by winning over the hearts and minds of those that have already come across, for one, guys. But for two, uh, you know, like I said, they, they turn loose, they open the prisons. They let all kind of people in this country. And these people coming in are going on our social welfare. And our country is getting broke by all this welfare and all these things that uh, we're, we're putting out. People cross the border and they immediately get money, lots of money. And matter of fact, there's been a lot of money spent on putting these people up in hotels. There's people that are making money building houses and, 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 and putting these people in them. And they're getting this money from the government and NGOs and other organizations. Yeah, why are NGOs funding this stuff, huh? Yeah, there's been a lot of weird stuff that I have heard about. So, guys, here's the deal. You know, you'd better look out for your own financial security with uh, all the inflation. All this is uh, driving amongst so many other things we're doing in this country, uh, spending money hand over foot. Yeah, the, the, the Federal Reserve is trying to put the brakes on it, but I, I can go into that in another video. But guys, you can believe me that if you really want to secure your value, I would highly consist you go to defythegrid.com and use the code GREENGREGS. It'll be in the links below, GREENGREGS. And you can get 1% off if you want to buy gold backs like this, which is actually gold. This is one one thousandth the troy ounce of gold that, in a form that you can put in your wallet and go and buy a 12 pack of eggs or a loaf of bread with. You know, we need to with the bartering system one day because the CBDCs are coming after us before we know it. Anyway, uh, you can also buy bullion and coins, and they got a, a deal. If you can find a better deal anywhere else, they'll meet it or beat it at defythegrid.com. Okay, and I've said about that. So, guys, let's talk about what uh, Mr. Uh, the uh, Secretary of Homeland Security, Mr. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Alejandro Mayorkas. He is actually waiving 26 laws and regulations. Just whoop, we're just going to waive them all. You know, they want to set these up for somebody like a future Trump administration couldn't do this. But no, now suddenly it's OK. We can just waive all these laws. Regulation goes, this is an emergency. What did he say? He said an acute and immediate need. What happened to them suing uh, Texas, the state of Texas, over the floats they put in Rio Grande? And are they still doing it? Maybe they are because, you know, you got to really wonder, are they really serious about this? Is this border dressing? Uh, what is really cooking here? But uh, Miraka said this. He says, there is presently an acute and immediate need to construct physical barriers and roads in the vicinity of the border of the United States in order to prevent unlawful entries into the United States in the project areas. Project areas? I don't know. What caused this sudden change of heart? What made them go suddenly hard over in this U-turn, which is completely against everything they stood for, even in the face of all the problems that was coming across, even in the face of the fact that uh, a lot of the blue states, excuse me, a lot of the red states started shipping these people to uh, very blue cities like New York. And, and, and in New York, they were suddenly going, ah, we can't handle it anymore. They loved it. They loved these policies as long as it wasn't in their backyard. Now they're getting it too. They're getting a share in the, the burden of dealing with a lot of people who aren't ready to support themselves just yet, you know? Uh, listen, guys, immigration is needed. We do need help and labor in this country, but we don't need anybody and everybody walking across the border until we can vet them. Would you marry somebody or let somebody in your house 
this just open your door up just imagine you know having open borders like open all the doors in your house taking off all the locks opening all the windows and anybody that wants to walk in can walk in oh yeah they can help themselves to your refrigerator that's the money you're paying out to support them now hey the people need help yeah but, but you know what we can best help them by helping their home countries be uh, free and having economies that we might trade with so they could have real jobs at home. They'd actually probably prefer that. They might even prefer if they weren't drug cartels wrecking the countries they're in or communist systems uh, wrecking what should be an oil-rich nation like Venezuela. Oh, yeah, Venezuela used to be a rich country. They're one of the big, sitting on one of the biggest uh, pots of oil in the world, yet they're in abject poverty because they went to communism. For all you that thinks communism is such a great and wonderful thing, it always fails. It always fails and will always do so. But a lot of people here have been sold a bill, uh, financed by the CCP through our school systems to brainwash young minds, young mushy minds, into thinking, oh, it's great and wonderful. <laughs> it's different, but it ain't great and wonderful. Yeah, the equality they, they have in that system is an equality of the lowest denominator, the lowest level. Uh, and there's no such thing as a classless society. Never was. It was always the, the elites in Russia that had their dachas up in the country and the elites in China, even under Mao Zedong. So guys, buckle up. Yeah, if you were in the CCP you were and, and a leader, you were ahead of all these others. So there's always been favoritism and, you know, like animal farm, those that were more equal than others. But that's a whole other story. So let's get back on this because the key thing here is there's been a sudden shift that, that precipitated because this was announced yesterday. Well, what else happened? <laughs> just right before that. Well, it just so happens that Jim Jordan announced that he was running for Speaker of the House. Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan grilled, grilled Mayorkas very hard in uh, House testimony. Very hard. And, and son, if he's got the subpoena power of being the Speaker of the House, oh, it would go very bad for Marocas and the entire Biden administration. And that's the last thing they want to see in an election year because it would probably totally sweep the Democrats out of power and the, the state that we refer to that people talk about being deep. I'm being a code word user here, if you know what I mean. Uh, oh, yeah, the FBI and all those good friends of ours, right? Oh, yeah, they would be under a lot of heat, a lot of heat. And the, ne the new Congress that come in would probably be slashing budgets. Oh, yeah, we need to save money. They'd go, oh, yeah, I know where we can save some money in our federal budget. We know what we can cut. <laughs> we also know what we're going to build, and it would be a border wall. So they probably saw this border wall coming anyway. But they and they may not even plan to go through it, but they're making the, the racket about it right now. It could just be an election employee. They might just say, oh, after, you know, it's all said, oh, we changed our mind, you know, and they might do that because they certainly did change their mind in a major, major, major way. So to give you some idea, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Jim Jordan grilled hard uh, Mayor Ocas. I'm going to play you a little video you can hear on that topic and so let's see here let me get it up here we're gonna play this for just a few seconds here so you can get a taste of how he's been grilling him secretary have any of the 42 illegal migrants on the terrorist watch list or no-fly list encountered on our southwest border been released into the united states uh ranking member jordan as i mentioned before i will provide that data to you with respect to the disposition of each one, I do not know the answer to your question. The Secretary That's, of Homeland Security okay. does not know the answer to the status of 42 individuals who came to our southern border illegally are on the no-fly list and the, uh, and the no uh, and the terrorist watch list. You do not do not know whether they have been released or not into the country. Uh, That's your testimony, Ranking Member uh, Jordan. As I've said before, I will provide you the data. I do go back to the general. That's amazing. Mr. Secretary, to... this is a... wow, wow, wow. You get that? You get that? You hear that? Did you hear that? So basically, what he was grilling him about was the 42 terrorists on the no-fly zone, on the watch list, who got in this country, and uh, the head, the Secretary of Homeland Security, could not vouch 
for what happened to these individuals after they came on our soil. It was also the case he grilled him extensively uh, on the topic of 14,000 smugglers who came into this country. Again, the same kind of answers. Oh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, we'll get back to you. I'll blah, blah, blah. But did he ever get back to him? No. Not as far as I know. So, guys, they are scared. The Biden administration is scared, particularly uh, Alejandro uh, Mayorkas is scared and the entire Biden administration is scared for the state of their party if these hearings are, are, are going on, if they get subpoenaed by the Speaker of the House in election year. So some of you go, ah, oh, they did a hard over U-turn, a complete change in policy direction on one of the major tenets cornerstones of their policy. Oh, we didn't mean that. We didn't mean that. We we got to do something. Really? Isn't that interesting how there was sudden, such a sudden shift? Because they know the American people are tired of this process. They're tired of it. They're tired of it. They're tired of having people coming across the border that aren't vetted. And, and this is not a racist matter. It's a matter of... And, Hey, we, we, can, we can use Mexicans here. I got no issue with that. But Venezuelans, there's plenty of them that have real cause and reason to want to come here because our country's failed. On the other hand, we have processes, procedures for immigration, and we do need to vet the people crossing our borders because we got a lot of other stuff coming across that border, including the fentanyl, including the, <clears throat> the uh, Chinese, what looks like, Chinese military individuals. Now, I could also understand Chinese want to get out of China and come here. Absolutely. I would too if I was in China. <laughs> Absolutely. There's plenty of really good people over there. You got to remember this. I've always said this on my channel. There are good people from every city, hamlet, shire, country, whatever you want to call it, around the world. Of every race, color, and religion. Every race, color, creed, and religion. And I've got a I've got a family that's a rainbow, if you know what I mean. I've got a Mexican granddaughter and a black daughter. So you got to bear that in mind, guys. This is not a matter of racism. It's a matter of our national security. It's a matter of our economy. What can we afford to bear? How can we handle this? What can we do otherwise to help these countries be more self-sustainable? Uh, we might want to trade with them instead of China. <laughs> You see what I'm saying, guys? There are better policy ways to deal with this stuff than just throwing the border open. If you don't agree with that, then go out. Just go to your front door right now and throw it open. Take the a hammer and beat your doorknob and you're locked to pieces because you don't need them. And open your house up and just go to bed. Oh, yeah, somebody might crawl in the bed with you. You, you, you got to cross your fingers and hope they'll just keep you warm and nothing else, right? How's it different? Huh? Tell me. How is it different? So, <clears throat> sudden big apparent change in policy is it real or is it memory x and i'm quoting the old commercial <laughs> is this real that's another question so tell me in the comments below why do you think they did this do you think it's real would they suddenly reverse again after the election or if jim jordan doesn't get to be speaker of the house are they going oh we changed our mind we didn't really mean that or will they just make some motions to make it look good for the election process or do you think they're serious? Do you really think they're serious? If you do, if you think I'm full of it, just <laughs> besides this, uh, well, on this topic or whatever, say so in the comments below. Just let me know what you think. But guys, this is interesting. We are in interesting times. A sudden change in the Speaker of the House may be about to change a lot of things. We don't know all the fallout, how it's going to play out. But to say the least, it's getting interesting. I would normally do this just on the Soil Head News Channel because this is a little bit in the political sphere, but it does affect us as preppers because it affects our national security. It affects who we are as a country. It affects, you know, your home security, not just our national security, the security in your, your communities, your streets. Yeah, law enforcement and loved ones that may be taking things it would cause them to kick over and start pushing daisies. All that stuff's coming across the border. Tuberculosis. Yeah, they find, they're they finding cases of tuberculosis in your skit, uh, schools. 
your kids, your grandkids are going to these schools. Do you want them to get tuberculosis? Yeah, we, we're not even vetting people whether they're sick or not. See what I'm talking about? You need to vet the people that come in this country. You need to know that, one, you need these people or they got a real legitimate need to come here. And two, if they have a legitimate need, you know, we can find some way to use them, I'm sure. But just to throw the borders wide open, to throw the front door of your house wide open, the front door, the back door, the side door. Yeah, just throw them all wide open. That's how we've been living as a nation. And when you get 260,000 undocumented immigrants in one month, how many over a year? We've got millions that come in this country. Millions, millions, enough to change the demographics of this country. But they don't want to deport them. No, they're still not talking deportation. Oh, no. I would hope they would find these 14,000 smugglers and those 42,000 terrorists and do a little research and figure out who the other people are that come in this country and consider whether or not to really deport them, <clears throat> especially if they're members of a foreign military that are here in our country training to join sleeper cells to take out our infrastructure like our dams and our power grid. Yeah, I've talked about those two topics in other videos and how vital that is to our survival as a people, not just a nation, but as a people, as communities. This is critical to us and us preppers. So let's hope that this actually happens, that they go through with it. It still don't give me a lot of faith and confidence in the administration. I'll be honest, I don't have a lot of faith and confidence in any political party right now, but we do have some interesting movements afoot. So keep your eyes wide open and head on a swivel and we'll see what happens. We'll watch and see what comes. Anyway, well, then I'm going to say thank you for watching. Leave your comments below. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to know how to contact your Congress critters and make your voice heard, go to freedomrestorationfoundation.org. I pay for that site myself so that you can take the action you need to take. Go to the Action Center page and scroll down below the, these alerts. I got to, so I got to get my, uh, a webmaster for it. But at the bottom on that Action Center page, it tells you how to take actions. And also join, uh, <coughs> pardon me, join our uh, survivaltribenetwork.com. Go there and join that. These are important things that you should do to take care of yourself and your loved ones. And if you're not prepping, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, guys, we are in perilous times. Thank you for watching and Greg out.